So if you may, please just tell us about Bearing International and what it does. Perfect. Thank you um, again for the opportunity. I'm going to keep it short because we can have a long discussion about BI. Um, Welcome to the Private Property Farming Podcast. My name is Mbali Nwoko, your host. Once again, thank you so much for choosing the Private Property uh, Farming Podcast as your preferred podcast to learn all things around farming. Every week we bring interesting guests, interesting topics, and we have interesting conversations. We deep dive into a specific topic and um, just jargons and, and systems and processes that I think can help you at the end of the day be an exceptional farmer, help you at the end of the day become a great professional in the agri-industry. Whatever career you're looking to explore, I think we are definitely uh, exposing so many opportunities that the agri-industry has to offer. Yet again, if you have any questions and comments for our guest, please feel free to comment on the comment section below and we're happy to answer all your questions. It's an exciting one, episode 129, slowly getting to episode 150. Um, I'm looking forward to that and uh, keep supporting the podcast. If there's any topics that you want us to cover uh, on your behalf, also please reach out to us um, right here on the Farming Podcast. Now, let me introduce our guest for today and we're going to be talking about reliable agricultural equipment, how to operate them, how to use them, what is it, etc. Um, and um, just talk about a wide range of agricultural equipment. Some you may have heard of before, some not. And we have a guest from Bearings International, and his name is Johan Streicher, who is the Area Business Unit Leader for Bearings International. Johan, thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing? Bali, thank you for having me. I'm doing quite well. Thank you, and yourself? It's a pleasure. Great. You know, not a lot of company, not a lot of people know about Bearings International. I myself don't know what you do in the industry, and I'm always excited to hear about new businesses. So, if you may, please just tell us about Bearing International and what it does. Perfect. Thank you um, again for the opportunity. I'm going to keep it short because we can have a long discussion about BI. Um, yeah. Bearings International forms part of the Udaiko Group. The company has been in existence for more than 60 years. Um, nationally, we have got a branch network of about 40 to 50 branches um, in strategic locations, let's call it. Uh, we supply a big range of products. Most of the people, if they think about BI or Bearings International, they think Bearings, as, in, as the name states. Um, in many cases, it's not actually just Bearings. It's BSDs, electric motors, power transmission products, industrial consumables, so it's quite a big range of products that we do not just bearings. Um, and of course, one of the markets that we're focusing on at this stage is the agricultural sector, because uh, we believe that's where the economy can benefit the most from at this stage. That's where we need to support our fellow farmers to keep uh, yeah, the people fed and keep food on the table. So uh, back to BI. It's a company we existed for 60 years plus. We supply industrial consumables, products, chains, earrings, gearboxes, motors, DSDs. We service a whole range of sectors, agricultural sectors from uh, livestock to tobacco to fisheries. It's a whole list. I can uh, go through them. It's implement manufacturers. We do some milling applications, beef and poultry farms, um, irrigation and crop production, fruit and vegetables, fishing and tobacco um, sectors. So yeah, we've got a, I won't yeah. say one-stop shop, but I think we're getting close to yeah. that, that that's, point, yeah. That, that's such a wide range of a portfolio, but maybe if you could just bring it a little bit home, you know. Um, so do farmers procure directly from you, or do you supply yes. agricultural organizations, like tractor organizations, implement organizations, um, like you mentioned, livestock. What is it that you do within the livestock sector? Is it around the tools and equipment? Uh, maybe just bring mm. it a little bit closer so we can understand uh, in much uh, uh, in much detail. Okay. Um, yes, we do supply OEMs, uh, meaning the 
implement manufacturers as well with, with bearings, power transmission, the whole list. Um, we do supply the customer direct as well, the end user, if you want to call it. So, yes, we supply the farmer direct. We've got sales people on the, on the roads, in the field. So, like I mentioned, we've got about 40, 50 branches nationally. Um, we've got knowledgeable, I won't say experts, but we've got good people in the field. And they service the sectors, yeah. They go out to the farms, they service breakdowns. We've got a 24-7 breakdown after our number. So if you have a harvester that broke down in the field while you're busy harvesting, mm. we can supply. We can deliver on-site. We can identify. We can procure. We've got a special sourcing department as well. If it's a product that we don't stock, um, we can procure from overseas. Um, normally, the lead times differ at the stage with the economy and the global situation is a bit longer than mm. normal, but yes, we can spe- or cater for special applications and special requirements. Wow. I'm glad you mentioned or gave us the example of if a farmer is plowing in the field or harvesting in the field and the harvester breaks down, they can call you. So now tell us what's the difference between you as in Bearings International versus the company in which the farmer bought his or her harvester. So let's say there's a breakdown in the field why should I call BI instead of the company that I procured the harvester form from? What's the difference there? I believe our service, uh, like I mentioned as well, our sales people are quite knowledgeable. Um, mm. They're eager, they're willing to help. They've got extensive knowledge of the farming sector as well as the industrial sector. Most of them are farmers, um, depending on the strategic location of the branch, of course. Okay. But um, yes, I would say... Uh, his internet is off. Price. You cater for the tier one, tier two, and tier three uh, market sectors, as you want to call it. If you want to put it in easier terms, it's a cheap middle class and then, of course, some people label it an expensive item. So, yes, we cater for the whole range of bulk volumes and of specialized oh, items as well. that's fantastic. And what is your role, Johan, as an area business unit leader? I mean, what is it that you focus on? And maybe, yeah, maybe let me just start off there. Which, what is your role within uh, uh, being an area business unit leader? And which areas do you uh, particularly look after? Uh, my scope at the moment is uh, for support and, uh, yeah, looking after. I've got about 12 to 13 branches that report directly to myself. Okay. Um, in the, all of those branches, there's branch managers, mm. as well as the sales people or the sales force. Um, mostly my work is just with the branch managers. I do travel the nationwide or the whole country, and that's up from Welcome oh. up to Alice Ross. Um I can go into the details. I, I'm going to keep you busy for a while, but yes, it's Polifani, okay. the agricultural branches, Polifani, Valcom, Skunda, uh, Bethel, Whitbank, Middleburg. Basically, the whole I felt Limpopo, that area. Yeah. Awesome. So, yes, I service the branches, I support them, I help them with price negotiations. Um, yeah, mostly farmers are a difficult <laughs> customer. Um, it's high production, high volume, high intensity, high pressure. So, yes, we try our best to keep them happy and uh, service them as per their requirements. Yeah. And based on your experience and um, obviously servicing various branches uh, who have direct contact and relationship with farmers, you know, how has the COVID, uh, um, the global pandemic affected the farmers directly and how has it also indirectly affected you um, as Bearings International. Um, you're selling a lot of parts. I, I can presume maybe farmers weren't procuring a lot of machinery. Just maybe, just maybe give us give us your perspective of how you as an industry have been impacted by the global pandemic. Um, on the farmer sector, to be honest with you, I think they were essential suppliers. Um, mm. It didn't have such a big influence on our business okay. uh, in terms of supply to the customer or to the farmer. We we did have after hours people. We did have people in the rotational um, shifts, if you want to call it, in the branches, and we were able to supply and to assist the farmers. Mm. Um, they were working through the pandemic, and that's why it's such a privilege for us to be able to support them or to supply them with products because we know what they did through the pandemic. Mm. 
all the effort they went and uh, all the risks they took um, while we were isolating or self-quarantining or, mm. or you know, being safe mm. against the COVID pandemic, they were uh, working. They were supplying us with the necessary products that we have to keep the table and mm. keep on the table our, our people fed. So, yes, it's a privilege for us to service them and to be able to assist where possible. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I know different sectors of the agricultural process has been affected by the COVID pandemic quite badly. With the fertilizers, I don't have the technical expertise on that section, mm. but I know it's uh, it's a tough, tough market at the moment, yes. Absolutely, absolutely. You said, you mentioned you have a lot of agricultural parts and components that assist the farmers to operate e effectively and efficiently as well. Um, have you seen a rise in sales as well um, in agricultural equipment, um, like tractors, implements, and maybe does that sell a positive story, obviously, with the growth of agriculture? Um, to be honest with you, I don't think I can um, elaborate too much on that topic okay. because we don't supply the, the, the tractors and the yes. implements. We just supply the parts for them. Mm. But based on, on our sales and, our, and the history of the COVID pandemic, yes, uh, I think some farmers expanded quite a bit. Mm. Um, like all pros and cons, there's some sort of opportunity and some expanded. But um, on our business, yes, uh, COVID was tough, it's still tough on the economy and on businesses. Mm. Um, but we were fortunate enough to be able to pull through and uh, supply the farmers through that time as well. That's fantastic. You know, and as technology keeps uh, rapidly expanding, um, uh, you know, the, the world is pushing farmers to farm sustainably, smarter, efficiently, effectively, all these big words um, that could obviously make the farmer just uh, stand out at the end of the day. How does Bearings International position themselves from a technology perspective? Maybe are there any new products we should be looking out for in the market that are in line with technology and innovation? Um, anything that you could share with us? Um, of course, yes. Um, the market is dynamic. We at Bearings International, we try to evolve with the market, yeah. stay ahead of the trends. So uh, we do have new products that will be launched. We have new products on the way as well. Um, but I think what differentiates us from a lot of other businesses in the market is we specialize mm. more on our core products. We don't expand too much um, so that we can't focus on specific items. Mm. We keep our specialities to what we do at BI. Mm. And like I mentioned earlier, we are part of the Udeco Group, which has a, in excess of 30 other companies. Mm. Let's call it sister companies yeah. that we can draw from. And that includes diesel engines, that includes mm. technology with satellites, it includes telephones if you if you want. And uh, just a, a few months ago, we even acquired KDAC, the, the gas company as well. So um, we are expanding. We are a dynamic company yeah. and we can supply a whole range. If we don't stock at NBI, like I mentioned as well, we can source through our sister companies and uh, for international yeah. if the requirement yeah. Um, as an area area unit manager working for an international company that's actually been around, you said I think it's sixty years. Not many companies can boast. Yeah, yeah. Not 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 many companies can boast such a long standing history in the agri sector. What do you think makes Bearings International or BI so successful um, to have been around for many many years and be trusted by many farmers? Um, yes, on that point as well, I think we live a certain value. Um, we promote our brand, of course, and then we, of course, we're human. We work with people every day. I think um, we are a corporate company, but I think we still got the, the human core in BI. If you come to a branch and visit the branch, I'm sure you can experience what I mean. Yeah. It's difficult to explain in words, but we still see a person for a person, and we still yeah. service them as the requirement, we understand frustrations, we understand um, the emotion of, of, of a human being. Mm. So I think that's one of the things, especially with the farmer mm. and the sector, it's a different kind of business if I want to put it like that. You don't work with systems, you don't work with mm. online portals and that type of system. Mm. So yes, mm. I think that, what, that is what makes BI different in a lot of, I know it's a great area, but <laughs> yeah. We, yeah. 
We've got some good people working for us. Fantastic. And as a service business, service orientated business, um, what are some of the maybe the top three things that or yeah, key, top three key things that you would advise a farmer, especially when handling machinery and equipment? Like, uh, how, how can we ensure that our machinery and equipment can last a season after season? Um, what advices do you give to your customers when they come to BI and they say, I need this service, this service? But how well can we look after our machinery or equipment, especially in times where there's high prices, um, you know, uh, inflation prices and interest rates are, are going up? So just what are maybe two or three things that you could advise a farmer to look, uh, to take care of their, uh, um, yeah, their machinery or their equipment? I would say, um, firstly, that we as BI, we don't just sell a product. We, we sell a service with the product. Um, it's the whole basket. So if a farmer or customer requires something, we won't just say, listen, for example, this is your product and you we send you off and you're good to yeah. go. We will do our best to identify in the first place and then afterwards give you options. We won't say... This is a cheaper one. This is an expensive one. We'll give you the options with the benefits, pros and cons. And in our experience, um, what will be the benefits of using certain items? So we will do our homework. We've got, like I said, technical, knowledgeable people. We can do the designs for you. We've got departments that can assist with that as well. So, yes, we will sell the whole basket to our customers and uh, be as efficient and as effective as possible. Okay, fantastic. Um, where can people find you, uh, Johan? Uh, any website, uh, any go-to contact email or contact number where uh, farmers and just make basically our audience can reach out to you? No problem, yes. I can give you uh, our head office number. They can direct your call from there to one of the 40-plus branches, and that will be yeah. 011. Eight double nine double zero double zero. Okay. Or we can visit the website www.beerings.co.za. Find an easy yeah. one. And of course, there's a email address as well. I can give you mine. And it's J O H A double N S for sugar at Beerings.co.za. Fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on to the show and just maybe just telling us a little bit more about Bearings International. I think um, a lot of our audience today have learned a thing or two about what you guys do and maybe just keeping abreast of all the changes that are happening in the industry and knowing that over and above your um, um, your, your um, equipment and machinery um, or tool company, they can come to bearings more so that they get an array of services. You know, there's a sales team, there's a technical team. And I think that's a very critical component in the agri-industry to have technical advisors. So thank you so much, Johan, for sharing um, knowledge about your organization and more so what you do and how exactly you work with the farmer because customer service is key at the end of the day. Perfect. Thank you, Mbali. Thank you again for having us on. And again, um, if there's any questions, yeah. or please put me an email or give me a call. We'll always assist. We definitely, we definitely will. That was Johan Streicher from uh, Bearings International. He's the area's Area Business Unit Leader for Bearings in International. And we spoke about their service offering, how they work with farmers. Um, so some of the key components you as a farmer could think of when it comes to servicing your tractor and equipment and machinery. He also mentioned a few examples in terms of, for example, if you're harvesting and your harvester breaks down in the field, you can contact them as opposed to your um, um, other um, trusted or preferred um, uh, service providers because they've got an array, array of products. They've got many, many branches. I think you mentioned plus minus 40 of them and um, a, lot of, a lot of technical advisory that comes with their assistance. So please reach out to them. He did give his contact details, uh, his email address and the main head office contact details to connect you with the branch nearest to you. So if that was not a mouthful, then I don't know what is. I hope you stay tuned for the next episode of the Farming Podcast, and I will see you then. Take care.